Kevin Hauser with the Cuffle Creek Apple Nursery, apple trees for hot climates in the tropics. A lot of people ask me, Kevin, what's your favorite apple? And I say, that's easy, King David. And a lot of people agree with me, and here's why. Discovered in a fence row in rural Arkansas and introduced by Stark Brothers Nursery in 1911, they touted it as their most productive apple variety. And this was no small feat, as it had some stiff competition with Red Delicious and Golden Delicious. At the time, Jonathan had been considered one of the best tasting apples, but King David beat it hands down on flavor, appearance, frost resistance, productivity, and tenacity. They also said no other apple bears earlier in its lifetime except Golden Delicious. Oddly enough, Stark Brothers Nursery, which is still around today, no longer carries King David, which is a pity. I found no less than a dozen watercolor illustrations of it in the USDA Pomological Watercolor Collection which is also remarkable since there is usually only one illustration for a variety due to the expense. From these illustrations you can see the variance in color from different regions. This is one of the odd properties of the variety in that it colors up well before it is ripe. Around early October it is red and often mistaken for wine sap, has a mediocre flavor. That's because it still needs another month on the tree to develop the distinctive deep burgundy almost black color. The flavor also dramatically intensifies and matches the color. A deep, dark, rich, spicy, whiny sweetness with a crisp texture like no other. My first contact with the tree came in 2006 when we were surveying old apple orchards in the San Bernardino Mountains. We found a lone tree of it and picked some of the apples for identification. Peter Matheson of Oak Glen correctly nailed the idea as King David, which was remarkable as the apples weren't completely ripe yet. I grafted cuttings from it in my yard in Riverside and it bore a few apples the next season. I kept waiting to pick them, wondering how to tell when it was ripe. The color kept darkening with a beautiful waxy bloom, and I started wondering if it was actually Arkansas black. Finally I couldn't stand anymore and picked one off. The suspense built as I washed it and sliced some for my wife to try at the same time. Would the flavor match the beauty of the color? I needn't had worried as the first bite blew our heads off. I can still remember that rich flavorful taste and the joy we felt as we realized what a great apple this was. And apparently we weren't the only people to think this as it seems to be one of the favorites wherever it's grown. John Bunker in Maine considers it one of the most flavorful apples and on the other coast in Northern California it's touted as a favorite at the Turkey Song Homestead. I've read rave reviews of it from Canada to Australia praising it for the same reasons we do. But there are other qualities besides the flavor that make it what I consider the world's greatest apple. First of all, it's productive wherever it's grown. The late blossoms miss the killing frost in the north, and yet it bears decent crops in the zero chilling climate of tropical Rwanda in East Africa. This tree here is at an orphanage and gets very little attention, yet despite the poor form of the tree and the excess of blind wood, it bore a nice crop of apples they said were delicious. Which brings us to the next great quality. The pastor leading the orphanage in Rwanda said the birds pecked the daylights out of his Dorset golden apples, but the King David were somewhat bird resistant. This is a big deal since they really have no good bird deterrence. We found it bug resistant too, as they're rock hard until almost completely ripe and seem to miss any coddling moth infestation. The tree is also disease resistant, which is not surprising since it hails from the hot and steamy Arkansas. If you're trying to grow apples organically, this is a good candidate. It also has naturally spreading growth habit that's easy to train the branches down to horizontal. And despite cropping heavily, the branches will bend but not break, an attribute also touted in the Stark Brothers catalog. The apples hang well on the tree, resisting our fall Santa Ana winds, but this also means that you have to keep testing them for ripeness since they will hang on the tree until they're mushy. They supposedly keep well, which we'll never know as ours are immediately consumed. I've only had them fresh, but many people have said they make great pies. Cider makers say the skin has lots of tannin which gives the juice a pleasing astringency, which combined with the high sugar and high acid content makes a terrific single variety cider. They also say more of the apple flavor persists through fermentation than with almost any other apple, both sweet and hard. I can imagine it would make killer dried apple rings. So where do you find trees of this wonderful variety? What a coincidence! We happen to have trees available as bench grafts that we'll be shipping this spring. So until then, like and subscribe if you want to see more of these videos. I'm Kevin Hauser with the Cuffle Creek Apple Nursery.